I don't know, Jordan, you're, you're moving pretty fast in that. I know we were flying. <laughs> we <laughs> both were up there. <laughs> hey, hey, good to see you again. It's good to be back. So uh, we have something special here. We're going to actually uh, go for a bike ride. We're going to go from Delft out to The mm-hmm. Hague. Uh, and this was from the 30th of October. And uh, uh, why don't you say just a couple words about, uh, about what folks are about to see here? Yeah, so it was a nice day. And we decided uh, being in Delft, we were close enough to, to The Hague to take a nice afternoon ride out there. Um, and yeah, we're about to ride to the Hague and then to the beach and then back in the countryside. Cool. Well, let's jump into it. Let's do it. And we do, uh, on most of this, I did, uh, th- uh throw a little bit of, uh, increased speed on the, uh, the video here. So it didn't take us, uh, as many hours <laughs> to make this, yeah. uh, this make this, this would have been an all day affair. <laughs> it would have yeah. been an all day affair, but uh, as this is kind of rolling, uh, just talk a little bit about this stretch, uh, here in Delft, cause this is one of the main drags here. This is a nice frame here with the w- yeah. windmill, the Dutch windmill right in front. I got a quiche there yesterday. At the window? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's a really nice spot. That's a great idea. Get a quiche. Yeah, you're welcome. Stop by there. Have one for the road. No, no. I, I like put that that idea to rest. I'm like, oh no, we, we we've got we've got stuff to do, man. We can't stop for we quiche. Did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We probably should we have. later on. <laughs> yeah. To talk a little bit about this this stretch this is one of the main drags uh right there in delft along uh one of the main canals yeah this was pretty cool um like this is a pretty interesting multimodal street right like it's a it's it's wide you've got the canal you've got the um you know bus and uh, you know car traffic really wide sidewalks great cycle track a few conflict points along there that I thought were might have been a bigger deal than they were, but they never turned into anything major. How about you, John? What stood out for you on the street? Feels so comfortable, it's so familiar. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's super, super familiar. Um, my favorite yeah. parts uh, are coming up. It's it's actually some of the outdoor cafes that are along this stretch, yeah, and definitely. then we then we dive into the old uh, uh, historic core. So let's uh, let's press play on this again. Yeah, that place is cool. And this, just like in in, in our uh, film that we did with Harlem, uh, this super super narrow, uh, old historic, you know, like streets. I mean, it's just yeah. really amazing. I mean, it, it just sort of hugs you. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it did feel like we were sort of the ones out of place in there, just because of how much slower speed that little alley was. Yeah, and you, you'll notice the sign there. It did indicate that this was a pedestrian priority area, which was one of the reasons yeah. why we, we kind of, you know, we were very, very careful as we were making our way through there. And then this is a cool little thing that we saw. Yeah, that's that cool water tower. There's like a museum over there too, a little like art gallery thing. A nice mobility trike uh, rolling by here. Mm-hmm. And of course, we had to get some, some streetcar tram, uh, you know, footage in here. Uh, again, as you mentioned, that was a multimodal sort of corridor there, so it's very, very yeah. similar area. We, we could have hopped on that uh, tram to del- to uh, the Hague ah, if we wanted to. Yeah, good point. Yeah. But we've got a bike ride to do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> this would have been a shorter video. <laughs> but shorter. But what's really cool is it, you, you were leading the way on this and navigating, and uh, we took a bunch of little side routes, yeah. and uh, we're actually going to turn left and go o- over this particular bridge here, and then connect up with uh, this sort of older style 
kind of edge lane road uh, environment. Uh, unfortunately, the painted lanes are right in the door zone here. But right talk, in the door talk zone. a little bit about this stretch here. Did you skip over the part where I went the wrong way? Yeah, I did. Did you leave that out? <laughs> I was like, I knew what's coming, and then mercifully, you left that part out. <laughs> I love this bridge um, right here. This is cool. This bridge is great. I, yeah. I loved riding along the canals. Just like, even though we were on a little bit less of a separated uh, street here, it's, you know, it's nice and comfortable. This one was kind of interesting, John. Weren't you going to point out that this is, feels like an, you know, an edge lane road, but it's two, two lanes in the, in the center? We didn't yeah, see too many like this. There, we, we had a few of these that are that are out there and yeah I don't I don't even know it I mean we'll have to have one of our friends uh, uh, from the Netherlands that uh, are really steeped well versed in in the different infrastructure I don't even know if this is officially an edge lane road because it's not a yield lane in, in between right. so maybe this is just considered a bike lane I don't know just a bike lane like we see over here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm not sure then it gets more comfortable yeah yeah i did hear uh, you know back from some of our uh, uh footage of looking at uh just what we think of as a a paved red street a, a very very interesting thing about this is you'll notice that this is a brand new uh feet strut and i kept calling it a feet strut and they're like well actually no it's that's just considered a dutch neighborhood access street uh and, and it actually has a, an official name um i'm not sure if i can actually get the the pronunciation of it right but it's it something along the lines of er Schwag. Oh, that was terrible. Or an ETW. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. I think we'll have you to nailed work it. on the pronunciation <laughs> of that. So, yeah. This was one of your favorite um, little parts of our journey, wasn't it? It sure is. Yeah. In fact, I, I talk about it in another stretch here. Uh, we, we're yeah, going to actually go over a major highway here, and yep. uh, you know, this is one of the neat things about this trip this particular route getting to The Hague is this is the more urban, suburban, road-centric route that we took, but we just went over a massive highway there. So yes, there's plenty of massive highways in the Netherlands. That was one of the things that stood out to me. Every time we crossed a highway, it was sort of like, I guess we're crossing a highway, but it's not as, uh, it's not as loud and as kind of uncomfortable as it usually is over here. Yeah, yeah. I had a hard time keeping up with you, man. You're really moving. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But again, yeah, an another just sort of painted door zone lane, you know? Yeah, this is kind of what we ended up with a lot of the time when we followed Google, um, yeah. Google directions. It sort of wants yeah. to put you on the, the most major, uh, and maybe most direct route. Yeah. Not always like the most comfortable. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point. But even so, it's, you know, they still ended up being pretty, certainly by our standards, pretty comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And again, you just up press the, the, the top. I was going to say, you just uh, kind of, uh, you know, you press that uh, or, you know, indicator there, the big button, and it's it was yeah. amazing how responsive the... Uh, the bike signals were to uh, you know us coming coming up to them, and some of them had sensors further up, so they actually anticipated us coming to that location. Yeah, that was kind of the one, the most one of the most awesome things is like learning about the different ways that they do the. This is a route that reminds me of North America. Yeah, me too. Very strode like. I believe that there's routes that we could take that are more through the countryside, and we'll yeah, do that on the way we'll back. Set up on the way back. Yeah, on the way back. But this and is we good. Do this is good for <laughs> us because this is North American context right here. This is how they made it happen, and you can see, you've got your pedestrian realm there. They added the cycle track here. They obviously have lots and lots of lanes for motor vehicle traffic, and so there's, I mean. It's quote unquote a complete street. It's a retrofit. Yep. Really stopping distance from 
Separated from pedestrian crossings. Yeah. Islands on all of these yeah. crossings. So even though it's kind of like a pretty major intersection. Yeah. There's also there's not as many um, driveways as we see in a North American road. Right. But the right of way would be probably identical to a lot of you know intersections in Dallas or Austin. Right. So again, it, you look at the. The example here, you also see that the cycle path and the pedestrian realm is protected by the trees. Yeah, I'm so glad we ran into that particular intersection that it just really is a great example. So you have the pedestrian realm, you have the cycle path, the older version with the bricks, you have parked cars, two lanes of traffic, the center median, and then the duplicate on the other side there. We would have been uh, waiting if that, this was in the US for that car turning right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. What did you say just now, Jordan? Well, for them to turn right, the driveway is raised to our level. So they had to kind of already be aware that they were crossing a cycle path. Right. So they had to wait for us to go before being able to pull out. And then still you have room between the cycle path and the roadway. So like they didn't have to park in our in our way to get a like a, a look to the traffic. Right. Yeah. And the other key thing about that too is that they were coming in off of a side street which was a 30 kilometer zone like this one right here so they're already coming off of a bicycle priority street yeah. so they're coming in off of a minor street coming off trying to turn onto a major street but first they have to navigate past the more vulnerable road users and so yeah it works like a charm yeah and mostly it's, through the like street surface materials right and and elevation and elevation. I'll pause here for just a second. We'll, we'll, we're getting into the really rich uh, tree uh, section here that we love so much. But uh, reflecting back on what we just rode through, uh, first that really, really busy intersection, and then we got to that that older uh, cycle path with the, the pavers and then that car yielding for us. Uh, what were, what, in, in having just seen that again, in, any you know kind of thoughts bubbling up for you? Yeah, just kind of how wide that whole street section was, you know, mm -hmm. from building to building and even and it was carrying a lot of people and a lot of different types of traffic. And so even though it was a really busy stretch of road um, and maybe it's because of the way it was divvied up and the trees and everything, it felt still a lot more comfortable. Like it felt like it still would have been a nice um, street to take a walk along, a little bit of enclosure on either side of the the roadway. Mm -hmm. Um, given the trees and that sense of separation. I don't know. I just like that one, like we were saying earlier, feels a lot more analogous to the sort of wide rights of way we see over here. Yeah. And I think it's in two different phases. In this in this section of it, it seems to be yeah. prioritized a little bit more towards uh, transit and, yeah. um, and and the, the motor vehicle traffic lanes have been narrowed a bit. I don't think they're as many or as plentiful as yeah. that one section, which the noise level was much, much higher. Uh, mm -hmm. As we press play on this again, we'll, we'll notice that it the, the our, both of our stress levels just came way down. <laughs> so it's really yeah. quite pleasant in here. So Jordan, this is one of my favorite parts about this route is this little tree tunnel. So I took this yeah. in 2019 and uh, the leaves hadn't started quite turning yet. So this is, a, this is special seeing a little bit of fall color in the leaves. I'm sure in a week or two, it'll even be much nicer.
So what do you think? I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. It's quite an interesting experience trees. when you're in this alley of yeah. trees. And, you know, really, it's it's a four by of trees. Yeah. So we've got the, the lane over there on the other side of the pedestrian realm. You've got this, this lane and the trees here. You've got a little grass area here. So we get just that additional buffer. And yet, again, another line of trees. Yeah. And so a line uh, and a line of park, parked cars. Now, it, the, the lane over here has reduced down from four lanes yeah. down to one in each direction. So, side yeah, we got a little bit of side street action here. But, uh, I mean, this is kind of a little bit of a suburban context and feel yeah. between Delft and, and The Hague. But that little stretch right there was worth it. <laughs> yeah. Just because of how wonderful it is. Um, no, I mean, you can see how dense the tree, uh, tree canopy is. Right? Yeah. I prefer softer surfaces, but oh well. <laughs> We're back to the brick Can't surface here going. because as you'll see, yeah. we do have cars parked in this area. So this is technically shared space. Um, but again, as we make this transition to the other pavers, it becomes a little bit smoother, but nowhere near as smooth as the best in class cycle track, cycle path that is, uh, you know, considered the treatment, the surface, which is the red asphalt, which is super smooth. All right, now we are transitioning our way into the outskirts of The Hague. We now have a nice silky smooth red asphalt surface getting off of the pavers, the bone jarring pavers. So that's quite nice to have the smooth surface. And again, you can see the trees. These are younger trees planted probably when this uh, cycle path was paved installed and again you can see how they handle pedestrian crossings in this heavily residential area here and again you can see how they have preserved on-street parking which gives additional protection to the cycle path still maintaining a lane in each direction So you were navigating uh, us through here. Uh, any any thoughts on what this was like? Uh, you know, sort of trying to pay attention to the directions and and get through because it, it increasingly got uh, more complex with lots of turns. Yeah, like one thing you got to pay attention to is when you go from a, you know just a one way to a two way cycle path, um, and that wasn't too bad, but. It's not always, you know, listening to, to Google give you the directions. You gotta you have to be aware of your surroundings too. Yeah, yeah. You can't completely outsource that awareness. Yeah. And I swear, when I rode rolled through this section in 2019, it was also in construction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so whatever yeah, that is, this one's yeah yeah in progress for sure. <laughs> in progress. <laughs> but you do get a sense but as to how they they did the construction you know tunnel right over the cycle path, yeah so that was nice it still didn't constrict the utility which yeah. is not always the case here yeah yeah for sure and as you can tell we're we're definitely getting into a little bit more of the urban context here yeah the, at least at least the newer suburban yeah uh, style and again on the outskirts of the hague you can see we now have just a cycle path on one side bi-directional and pretty steady stream of cars on a two-lane road we have some parking over there as well pedestrian realm this is a 
residential area. You see many residential apartments, towers. This was definitely not the most, if I was gonna go for a walk, I don't know that I would pick this particular. Yeah, no, it, it definitely, our stress level went back up again, yeah. Yeah. It was noisy. Um, you do see multiple, multiple lanes of traffic right there. But even going through that Dude, intersection, you don't like, like this. this at all. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice catch! Wow, good eye. <laughs> because yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a little bit, uh, um, yeah. it, it, a little bit jarring there to to, to realize that. We would have been ooing and aahing if we were in Austin, Texas, though, yeah, or Dallas. Yeah. yeah. You still have the the little uh, refuge, you know, corner, the protected corner, a little bit yeah. going through there. So that's that's a plus. Yeah. I realized I've got our 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 images here in the wrong spot. We were missing some of the uh, the uh, um, the text. At least when I do the text down below, so I'm gonna move. Up. I'm gonna move us up. You have to read it for us. Hang, hang, hang in, hang on there. I'm gonna move right. you up here. <laughs> you up as well. Wait, hey, we're doing this on the fly, you know. <laughs> there you go. I didn't know those could be moved. Yeah. And again, this is really good context for um, a North American comparison purposes. You've got large, multi-lane avenues coming here together but because you have the cycle paths designed in with parking protection with trees up at a elevated grade away from the traveling vehicles it makes it work so again from a north american context what's going on here in the hague is something that can be replicated And I guess what I really mean by that is, you know, what's going on there in The Hague can be replicated, meaning uh, it, it's very car centric, but at the same time, yeah. they've found a way to get, you know, get this in. So they also have the streetcar line in this area as well. So not only do they have four lanes of motor vehicle traffic, but then they also have the streetcar line plus the cycle paths plus the pedestrian realm. And again, you know, with that transit two lanes of traffic, a little, little more on the stressful side. And again, take note of the comfortable large trees. I say comfortable, it makes it comfortable for us over here on the cycle path. We start to notice a difference here as we're as we're kind of getting into a leafier zone, not as busy in traffic. It's not necessarily more space. In fact, it might even be even more constrained. Yeah. Off to our right. Yeah, you can see that buffer between us and the road. You know. Yeah. Pinching and expanding, depending. Yeah. Yeah. And to our right, this is a whole green area here. It's a park or, or part of the, uh, the palace grounds. And so it was, yeah, definitely a lot quieter and more comfortable because everything on our right is really um, natural park area or, or, or basically a forest. doing a good job navigating us. I thank you. Right to the gates. Mm-hmm. I'm really flying. Yeah. It's, like I said, it was a hard time keeping up with you, man. And here we are. And we have arrived at the Peace Palace. So we didn't stay there very long um, because uh, we, you know, kind of wanted to get out of 
<laughs> the heart of uh, of the Hague. But uh, we, we did pause there for a few minutes. Uh, then we hit the road again. And really, we were wanting to, you know, basically get to the countryside. But first, as you mentioned earlier, we wanted to go to the beach. Yeah. And so we're navigating on a slightly different uh, route than we were before. And uh, we're about to get into a section of architecture that is my absolute favorite. I love these, yeah. It's just visually, I mean, again, it's the scale is just right. And visually, it's just so pleasurable to be in here and uh, looking into the distance, you can kind of see that the road sort of curves just a little bit. So you're able to see even more of the buildings as you go. Yeah, it's interesting. Right, Some Jordan. of these blocks are really long. What do you think about this? This is a little bit more pleasant than some of our other rides. Yeah. They have these really long blocks. Yeah. Here. No, there we are. <laughs> Yeah. It's quite nice. Yeah. I love that that look, you know, the older architecture and the, the red brick and the white frames. Great window, details. Yeah. Yeah, you had com you know commented on that several times during the, the two weeks uh, that we were going around different uh, cities the the detail around the window areas oh yeah really just fabulous got to make the most of the you know diminishing light in the in the uh, the winter months and also just in general with yeah. not a lot of sunlight there yeah Yeah, I don't know what the history is on, on this particular block, but that, that little section there is, was just such a joy to, to ride through. It's the first yeah. time I had seen it, so. And once again, we're back on a nice, super wide uh, two-way uh, cycle path along a relatively busy uh, you know, corridor, but uh, I was just amazed at the number of people riding through this section. Yeah. And families, too. Again, this is a weekend. We're in a bicycle traffic jam here. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those places that can be a little tricky. Yeah. Because um, you've got a little bit of stopping area, and then there's, yeah, just like that, you can you have to navigate a little bit, but never was yeah. too cumbersome. And in that section there, we were on that two-way cycle path, and then we ended up on the other side of the street over here onto this uh, unidirectional uh, cycle path. And uh, even on this side here, as we're heading, you know, basically taking a beeline towards the beach here, is, uh, yeah, we just saw lots and lots of people. I'm not sure if they were all doing the same thing we were doing, but uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, a nice little train of folks uh, riding in that direction. We're definitely on a busy route. Yeah, it was packed. There's probably more people on bikes than in cars. And yet, look at all the lanes for the cars. It's just yeah, still mind-boggling. They do narrow down though. In a couple of blocks yeah, we're coming we up to a nice suburban context roundabout. Your standard Dutch design roundabout giving a nice comfortable route around we end up seeing a, a few more of those roundabouts uh, through this segment and yep. uh, yeah here's another one just brilliant how easy it yeah. is to navigate through those very civilized yeah yep and it was interesting too because we kept 
All right, transition. Jordan, what are your thoughts on this particular facility? I think it's pretty nice to be, you know, in a street that you can share with cars because they're going slow enough and because the red pavers indicate that you're, you're the priority of the cyclist. What do you think? Yeah, no, I would agree. Um, swing around here and we can see we're separated from the main road where we have motor vehicle traffic and we have a series of roundabouts that we have gone through. So you have the priority through the roundabout area and it's just super, super comfortable. The motor vehicle traffic speeds are reasonable and everybody navigates their way around, you know, quite easily. Doesn't have to be much harder than that. You can see the 50 kilometer per hour speed coming out of the roundabout and we'll swing around and see what the speed is approaching the roundabout. Again, 50 kilometers per hour. It's gonna be right around 31 miles per hour. It's a little faster than what we'd like to see. The Netherlands has come out with a report recently indicating that the traffic crash and fatality rates for 50 kilometer per hour zones are unacceptably high. So I would not be surprised to see streets like this you know, come down in speeds. I really got the sense that that particular stretch right there was a, a fairly relatively recent redo. Because if you notice the the trees that were there were very very juvenile. Yeah. They're, they're they they mm -hmm. weren't yet mature. So I, I have a sense that that was probably a, a recent reduction in in the number of travel lanes. Yeah. And again, here's another one of those neighborhood uh, access streets uh, done in the red uh, bricks, which keeps us there. And then we came around the corner and boom, we were on the path, the cycle path, are. leading yeah. right into through the dunes. So this is sort of through the dunes area. You see people walking and uh, cycling in that area. And uh, we come up over this ridge and boy, we, we see the ocean. We're there, we're at the beach. Yeah, this was wild. Well, well, this was happening. I don't know. It felt surreal to be able to bike from like inland to the beach in such a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> yeah. Also, it being what almost November and this nice at the beach was also a little weird. Yeah. But I'll take it. And I sped that up a little bit on the video in post-production, but it was actually the steepest hill that we had to climb the whole day. Right. <laughs> Getting yeah, up to this that's area. Right. So I was a little out of breath. Steepest <laughs> hill in the whole Netherlands, probably. Yeah, I actually tuned down the, the audio on that because I was breathing hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, these are just spectacular views. Um, I, it was such a pleasure to be able to get to this. It was very refreshing that point and as you can see there like I said you know November almost November and plenty of people uh, at the beach plenty of people riding around I like your DJ work on this oh, thanks this music that you're setting up this is good So, first time at the beach in a long time, yeah. and uh, not real sure what the name of this particular beach is, but it is uh, quite nice. It's a nice day, and we have lots and lots of people who are riding here to the beach. Uh, doesn't look to be much of any wind or uh, really surfable waves, but it's still nice to see the little lapping waves there. See it maybe in the distance. What do you think, Jordan? When was the last time you were at the beach? 
And I've never been at this beach, but the last time I was at a beach. A beach, any beach. A year and a half. A year and a half. It's definitely been longer than that for me. I think the last time I was at the beach was probably the extension of this beach, a little further up the road. Hmm. Hey, we got oh, yeah, that from Harlem. <laughs> we gotta get you back to a beach. We got you yeah. on a, get you on a oh, surfboard. Oh, yummy, Mick Drive. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that always made me a little bit happy. Are you ready for some McDrive? Yeah, I love a good McDrive. <laughs> <laughs> that was so surprising to see that. <laughs> That's Shocking, what they should call him here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, these kids are not going to the McDrive. <laughs> <laughs> they were asking. They were asking the whole the whole way too. Yeah, what yeah, right. No way. No Mick drive for them. <laughs> we actually uh, follow this uh, young family for a while here, and. Uh, just a, a, a neat, uh, neat little stretch of road. Again, now we're heading from the beach, um, heading into a more rural context and uh, making our way into some villages. Again, another good example here, more of a ex-urban, suburban context. You got the walking path over here, through the trees. Nice two-way cycle path here. Birds are happy too. And then of course, two lanes of motor vehicle traffic, nice me center median. Really, the only thing that would make this a little bit more pleasant to have some mature trees in this buffer that separates us from the motor vehicle traffic. But pretty darn pleasant. ask and you shall receive now we have some trees buffering us from the motor vehicle traffic and that little uh, green buffer zone thank you very much love the tree trees dropping their leaves here in autumn it's quite pleasant a little bit of mountain biking route here Very cool. Good fun. Look at that little jumps. Telling you, I think we should have taken the Bromptons over there. I know. I think they could have handled it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just so amazing when you have the ability to ride through a forest like that. It's it just makes it so comfortable, even if you have cars yeah. nearby. All right, here is a nice little uh, cross section. We've got our cycle path, our pedestrian realm, and the shell filling station. There you go. Mashup of different worlds. Again, this was a, a kind of an interesting area to see, you know, the buses there. Right on the edge of the urban yeah. rural divide. We've got some greenhouses over there, some agricultural fields. And then on this side, housing. Nice residential edge lane road here. Obviously 30 kilometers per hour. Motor vehicle parking for the residential units are actually up on the same level as the walkway. 
Now, I think this actually is an edge lane road (laughs) because it is two-way traffic in the center section there. And uh, I think I'm going to schedule another uh, episode with Michael Williams to talk about edge lane roads in general. And I'll get some clarification as to, you know, whether these are, you know, truly considered that or whether, you know, since there's you know, parking over there, whether, you know, it's a different context or maybe there's another, you know, name for these altogether. So. Yeah, definitely not a rural context, but still doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and as you see here, it transitions, it kind of yeah, widens, widens up in the middle here. Huh. And then we've got merging into a roundabout. Yeah, you can tell that was an older one because the angles were yep. not as comfortable. Yep, I would not be surprised if that gets changed in the future. But we're rolling into a, a, an old village here, and we were getting yep, thirsty. So, people. yeah, yes, we were. It was time. It was time. We were thirsty. It was time. And this is the village that we're rolling into. And the power of having a mobility scooter helps keep families together. And we're just hanging out. We're having a beer. We're just kind of relaxing and snapping some shots. Yeah, there you go. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and then we take off again. So then we're back on yeah. the road again. And we get into some really cool rural, you know, things. And now we're literally in a, a suburb just outside of Delft. So yeah. just like that. It seemed like it didn't take us any time this at all, and we're already a cozy little place too, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And I look at this on the map, and I was like, "Oh wow, yeah, this is just like a little suburban neighborhood." Mm-hmm. It, has its, it does have its own name, but yeah, it's it's very very cool that you know, we were so close to. Uh, the downtown area of yeah. uh, of Delft. Yeah, we were just a short ride from Delft from here. Yeah. Maybe we have a highway coming up, I think. Pretty major road here. And we go parallel with this. And that was it. There you go. Nice work, Sean. Hey, thank you very much. And thank you so much for, for navigating on that particular uh, trip and, and route. Uh, it, it was a, a great deal of fun being able to uh, spend a little bit more time, being a little bit more intentional about uh, yes. catching some of the footage. So I, I really appreciate you you doing that. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, parting thoughts. What, what were uh, some observations of you know having gone through that uh, memory once again? Yeah, I mean, you uh, you sort of get used to feeling like, oh, I can I can ride to anywhere I want to if I've got the time. And it'll be relatively comfortable. It's sort of just like, well, I don't, I don't even have to really. I'll check the route and how to get there. But like, you sort of just assume you're going to be able to get anywhere you, you want to go. And that was the case on the yeah. the ride to and from um, the Hague and the beach. And uh, that still just amazes me, right? I mean, we have yeah. that assumption with the car here. Like, I'm gonna whatever point B is, I'm gonna get from from here to there, right? Um, and there's gonna be connection and and whatnot, but. Um, this was like sort of one of our first, uh, one of my first introductions to that reality. Yeah. Um, yeah. what about you? 
Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And I, and I just love the, you know, going from the different transects, you know, we're going from, you know, uh-huh. the urban environment to the suburban environment to the rural environment and then back again. And yeah. uh, I'm so glad that we made it to the beach and I'm so glad that we decided to go back to Delft through some of the more rural environment and through some of the old historic villages. Yeah. Um, I it, it was interesting that many of those streets that we were on uh, heading in, in that direction. Uh, some of them were major streets with transit yeah. a- along those areas. Uh, but then we also had some that were truly, truly rural and being on like yeah. literally a narrow path with sheep all around us. And, and, uh, a- and then before you knew it, we were right back in Delft in that really yeah. kind of newer suburban context, but you saw how effectively they did at, uh, ensuring that there were safe and inviting all ages and abilities facilities for us to be able to ride on. Yeah. And you saw a lot of that cycle network doing double duty um, as transportation and as recreation. Clearly some people were out just kind of for a, what was it, sort of a Saturday or Sunday, um, you know, nice bike ride. Obviously some of the people on the sports bikes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, that that's pretty cool. Like we, I think that's come up a few times for us when we were there. Yeah. Just that ability to have something be multifunctional like that. Yep. Good stuff. All right. Well, we need to bring this to a, a conclusion and close this out. This was October uh, 30th and uh, that next day, Halloween day, uh, the 31st. Uh, uh, I, I actually went down to Utrecht. So uh, I'll be producing that next video uh, with uh, some of the folks that I rode around with uh, in Utrecht. And then you're going to be back uh, for the video that we'll produce on November 1st. And we were in Amsterdam and we had a special guest and we're going to actually produce two videos for right. uh, the November 1st. We've got a, a morning and an, an afternoon or an early afternoon and a late afternoon into the evening uh, videos. So we'll, we'll be able to milk that for two separate videos. Uh, Jordan, thank you so very much for doing this. I really appreciate uh, your support in, in doing these reaction videos. Thanks for having me on, John. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video of us riding to The Hague and back. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell so that you can customize your notification preferences. And as I mentioned, I'll be back with the Utrecht video with a special guest there, as well as our November 1st uh, reaction videos out on the streets of Amsterdam. So until then, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.